For the next series of tests, what I'll be doing, I'll be repeating the tests I did in the prior video, but uh, this time the spectrum analyzer is going to use a narrow bandwidth, so we'll get to focus in more on the signals coming in. So right now I have got the spectrum analyzer connected to the output of the first SA612 and I'll be feeding a 1500 hertz tone into the microphone and the BFO is set once again it's going to be 4913 hertz and uh, this way we'll get to see what the mixing components coming out of that 612 is going to look like. So once again I had to do a single sweep and uh, this is showing the output from the SA612 with a 1500 Hertz tone being fed into it and with the BFO of 4.9 megahertz and you can see the center here uh, which is marker number one is 4.9 1 megahertz and that's that marker right here and I've also, marker right here, and I've also got a delta between these two peaks here to see what the difference between those peaks are. And that's what's showing up here. It's 1500 hertz, uh, 1500 uh, hertz uh, which is the uh, tone that's being fed in. So that's the BFO. And that's the BFO mixed with the um, <clears throat> 1500 hertz tone. This is the BFO uh, mix with the 1500 hertz tone, but that's the lower side. That's the uh, uh, subtraction. This is the addition of 1500 plus the BFO, and here's 1500 minus the BFO. These are all minus. These are all pluses. And again, each of these is coming from the harmonics of the sine wave I'm using. It's a tone and uh, on my phone, and it's got uh, quite a bit of harmonics and if you take a look at all these peaks here you'll see all the peaks are separated by 1500 uh, Hertz from each other so I've got the spectrum analyzer in uh, <clears throat> it's free running and as I'm talking you can actually see the mic is picking up my voice <clears throat> and it's uh, taking that audio that audio and modulating the BFO uh, signal And I'm approximately about uh, two to three feet from the microphone, and the microphone is uh, picking up that uh, my voice and uh, picking up the audio quite well. For this next test, I've moved the spectrum analyzer to the output of the crystal uh, filter, and we'll see what signals are actually coming through the uh, crystal filter. And again, I'm using a very narrow sweep on the spectrum analyzer. So I'll have the BFO on, I'll have the uh, 1500 hertz being fed into the microphone and uh, the local oscillator which is feeding the second SA612, it's going to be off. Before I feed in the 1500 hertz tone, I thought it'd be just interesting to connect it to the output of the uh, crystal filter and just look at uh, just random audio going into the microphone. You can clearly see here one, that's the actual carrier. That'll be the actual BFO signal. And if you look at one, that's a 4.9 megahertz uh, signal. And you'll see every time I whistle, uh, peak comes up here, which is going to be the signal that's mixing, the audio that's mixing with the BFO, with the carrier, and we're getting, we're seeing the signal over here, which is being passed through the crystal filter. And you can clearly see it's passing the upper side, what looks like it's the upper side, but in essence, because uh, this has got a carrier inversion, 
it's going to be the lower sideband. So right at that level it's showing that I've got a little bit of carrier bleeding through. The noise floor is, looks it's about one if we look at marker number two not marker number two let's look at four so the noise floor is about 119 110 115 110 dBm and we're seeing signal about mi minus 92 so we're We've got about uh, 20 dB above the above the floor, roughly 10 to 20 dB. So it seems the carrier is quite high. May need to go and adjust that a little bit. This spectrum shown the output of the crystal filter with the 1500 tone, hertz tone coming in, and uh, again I've got a single sweep mode. So you can see here this is the actual BFO, the the carrier here and this here is the 1500 hertz tone and if you look the difference between these two peaks here it's at uh, 14, 1500 hertz and you'll see that the difference between the two the rel relative value between the two is 47 48 almost 50 dB so the carrier is about 50 dB down and I can probably adjust that to do a little better I think the the carrier <clears throat> the still isn't a pass band of the um, crystal filter so if I was to uh, adjust my BFO frequency I could probably move that out of the pass band and get this uh, signal to be the uh, the only signal uh, in the pass band and as you can see there's another signal here popping up and the difference between these two signals is again 1500 Hertz so that's the other sideband of the 1500 Hertz mixing with the uh, with the BFO uh, aka the carrier. What I did I adjusted the uh, BFO frequency to get that carrier out of the uh, passband of the filter so now the carrier which is shown here is uh, is right down the noise and I'm seeing the fundamental frequency here at 1500 Hertz tone and I'm seeing another peak here cropped up and th this is in fact the second harmonic of the 1500 hertz tone and the way I can prove that is I did a delta a marker between the carrier the BFO and uh, this peak here and you can see they're exactly three kilohertz apart which is two times the 1500 hertz uh, uh, fundamental tone and uh, if you look at the uh, the measurement here it's showing that the delta it's down 44 dB so the carrier is 44 dB down uh, from this uh, um, harmonic here uh, which is not as good as what I was seeing before because I was closer to 50 dB down and to me what that's indicating is the I'm riding the skirts of the uh, passband of the filter so the skirts probably like this and I am now these uh, peaks are on the skirt of the passband and it's being atten attenuated so not as much signal is making it through the uh, crystal filter but certainly I've gotten rid of the uh, carrier by doing that. So here's the new setting of the BFO that I used to uh, null the carrier. Uh, the BFO now is set to 4911907 Hz and before it was set to 4913.007 so I had to decrease it um, a little bit to get the carrier uh, outside of the filter passband. The spectrum analyzer is now connected to the output of the SA612 I'm feeding in a local oscillator frequency 12015087 Hertz and I'm um, feeding in a 1500 hertz signal to the uh, mic and I've set my I've reset the local oscillator 
back to the frequency I was using before, which was 4913.007 hertz. Uh, just because I made the other measurements at that uh, BFO frequency, I thought to be consistent, let's follow it through. This is showing the output of the uh, second SA612, and I've got a uh, very narrow uh, bandwidth here. So what we're seeing, again, we're seeing the carrier here, and we're seeing the uh, 1500 hertz tone here, and so that 1500 hertz tone, it's at 7.100 uh, megahertz. So that's the fundamental of the tone coming in, mixing with the BFO, the carrier, uh, being passed through the crystal filter and then mixing with a 12 uh, megahertz uh, local oscillator which is producing the 7 megahertz um, RF output and that's what we want to go through the bandpass filter and go on to the uh, uh, power amp. So these other peaks here I suspect those are the um, uh, harmonics of the tone uh, that's mixing with the BFO and uh, uh, making its way through the uh, uh, crystal filter. So if you take a look at those frequencies, you'll see they're about uh, 1500 hertz apart. So I've got the spectrum analyzer running in uh, free run mode. And uh, you can clearly see a peak here, which doesn't move. Then you're seeing this hump here. So because I haven't nulled the carrier, that's the carrier that's bleeding through here. And you clearly see this is the lower sideband. So due to carrier um, inver or, uh, sideband version, I had to feed the upper sideband to the second um, mixer in order to get the lower sideband coming out. So if I adjust my BFO, I'll be able to get rid of that, that carrier peak there. And I went back to the old BFO setting just to be consistent. consistent. And it's a good thing I did because here we can clearly see the lower sideband uh, relative to the carrier coming out. <whistles> test. 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 So I've moved the SA to the output of the bandpass filter and you can see it's a little bit cleaner, it's a little bit smoother. But it's pretty much the same because uh, it's a 40 meter bandpass filter and all these frequencies are in the pass band of the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, inject a uh, 1500 hertz tone into the microphone. This is showing the output of the bandpass filter and again it's in the single sweep mode. And uh, here you can clearly see the uh, fundamental coming out which is 7.1 uh, megahertz. Uh, that's the carrier there and these are what I believe are, are the harmonics of the tone coming through. And one of the first things you'll notice is all the peaks have dropped down slightly. And I think the difference between what we saw before and what we what we see here is the insertion loss of the bandpass filter. And uh, that's what's uh, causing these peaks to drop down a little bit. Or uh, possibly the skirt of the filter is causing it to come down. But I think it's uh, primarily due to the... Uh, insertion loss because we're only got a bandwidth of uh, of uh, 12 kilohertz here so I don't think we're quite on the skirts of the um, uh, bandpass filter